Now this is my third time trying to record this video. The first time the postman came and I had to stop everything and go and find a one-time code and all this palaver. And then the second time Debbie just put up a photo to the group chat of this um, parrot and parrot chick thing that she's made for Robin's birthday uh, tonight. And so all the family's like doing notifications saying like how cute it is and everything. So it's... <laughs> It's just, it's a nightmare. And now it's raining, so you can hear the rain um, on the conservatory roof. So what, this is just such a pain. And I'm going on holiday tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm like in a real rush trying to get it done. And it's just like more haste, less speed and all that. So anyway, I've pulled up my sewing and growing guide on my iPad. I'm gonna record the screen so that you can see what is going on. And I've put everything on do not disturb. So hopefully, hopefully, I can actually get this one done. Uh, first up, celery. This isn't my first batch of celery. I've got two previous batches of celery. One's planted out in the polytunnel at the moment. One will get planted out in cold frames and whatever soon. And then this is the kind of late batch, a late maturing variety, Utah. And that'll be the one that I'll keep on going probably over winter. Um, so we like, you know, just to like get some celery like all year round, nice and fresh. Um, I've got lots of beetroot in the ground, in the polytunnel and the backs of my low tunnels, the ones that are going to have the peppers in them. Um, but I'm going to do a batch of beetroot now that are going to be the ones we're going to be eating over summer uh, and into early autumn. And so late summer and early autumn. And these are the golden beetroot. I like to do the golden beetroot late and, you know, sort of early April to plant out in May because I, I find they don't do very well until the weather really warms up. They don't die, but they just don't really grow very much. So there's not a lot of point kind of tying up bed space. So I want to explain the way I do my uh, onion set. So I start them in module trays and they're actually in module trays now and they're out on the patio getting rained on. Uh, and the reason I do them, start them off is because I put them out quite late and the reason I put them out late is because they're going into the kale beds that have been overwintered and we're still harvesting that kale and we'll continue to harvest it uh, all the way through until uh, May. And so I clear beds progressively. So once every, uh, every week I clear a bed uh, and then I plant parsnips and then in the gaps between the parsnips I put the onion sets in. And then the next week I clear another bed and do the same and then another bed and do the same and basically it goes on like that. And that's why I start them in module trays just so I can get them started at the right time, which is now, but not planted out maybe for sort of two or three weeks. I've got my early parsnips in, they're all germinated now uh, and they're the ones we'll be harvesting in August. So carrots, I've got a lot of carrots in, started my carrots back in sort of January. Uh, this year, but I also started some back in October last year. The ones from October last year are the ones we'll be eating in May, just as the ones that we've got in the ground finish by the end of April. And, and then basically I've just got ca continuous carrots then. And these are the first batch that I'm going to do in the ground. I don't like doing my ones in the ground until about the middle of April, just because it's so cold and wet. Um, Carrots, they often don't germinate very well when they're sown so early. They just rot in the ground. So anyway, that's why I kind of do mine a little bit later. But these aren't my main crop carrots. These are just the ones that I'm going to be eating in sort of midsummer. And the ones that I'm going to be eating in autumn and winter and early spring, those are sown in May and June. Um, all the details, by the way, are of this database and everything you can find in the description down below. So uh, don't worry about um, not you know, picking up on the variety names or something as I mentioned them. Just go look them up if you want. Um, I've done my Brussels sprouts. In fact, I've done most of my brassicas already. They're all growing along quite nicely. Um, but I do find that sometimes I get a little bit of cabbage aphid problem on my Brussels sprouts. So I like to do a second batch and plant them in a different location and with a different timing. And that kind of guarantees that I'll get some Brussels sprouts. So we'll see how that goes. 
Um, I also do some Pentland Brig Kale, which I would have done back in the middle of March when I do all my other brassicas, but um, uh, unfortunately I couldn't find the seeds, so I had to buy some more, so that's the only reason that that one is late. Uh, New Zealand spinach, if I was sowing from seed, 12th of April would be when I would do my New Zealand spinach. Um, not because it's tender, it, it's not, it can cope with frost, no problem. It just doesn't grow very fast, so there's not a lot of point sort of starting it early. It only really starts growing when it's really, really warm. So it's best to kind of, you know, have it started 12th of April, sort of planted out middle of May, and then it's kind of warm enough for it to, to grow fast. Um, actually, I generally don't sow mine from seed though. What I do is I prick out self-seeded uh, New Zealand spinach seedlings because it drops seed like crazy in New Zealand spinach. So it's best to always grow it in the same bed, I think, because it, it, it doesn't have any pests. Um, and it always then just self-seeds. So chard, I don't do any early chard because I find it always goes to seed for me. I, maybe it's just my sandy soil, I don't know. But um, yeah, if I do it sort of middle of April and then I did probably do another batch later on, um, and there's a better chance that it, it won't go to seed early. Starting my Cobra French beans that'll go in the polytunnel again about the middle of April. And I will just say though that I'm quite cautious with my sort of French and runner beans. I don't do ones for outside very early, but some of my allotment neighbors do. And about two thirds of the time, they don't die and they actually get as early a crop as me or nearly as early a crop as I do in the polytunnel. So if you've got the space, which I don't, then it might be worth trying an early crop and then just being ready with, you know, a new succession if, if you lose them. What I do find is though that they kind of just leave them to it and then I see a frost coming and I'll go and fleece them for them because otherwise they would, would lose them. Um, I won't mention turnips and radishes and things again because obviously I'm always doing succession to those. Uh, I'm still doing cherry bell, it's one of my favourite, but um, scarlet globes are really nice as well. Um, I've gone off French breakfast, I just find that these little cherry ones, they're just more reliable uh, and they're you know, really nice and fast growing. Um, Tokyo Cross is still my favourite of all the turnips, but it's much more expensive than, um, what is it, Snowball I think is, is the alternative. Um, yeah, it's way cheaper. I, you know, I don't know. I, grow, I don't grow a huge amount of turnips, so just getting the best ones is is worth it for me. So when we come to the potatoes, so all of my early potatoes are in. Uh, but in fact, I've been in for a long time and I'll be harvesting those in a month or so. Um, my early baking potatoes are now in the polytunnel, but they're not broken surface. Um, but I'll leave them in the polytunnel. For probably for the whole of their life. Um, these are what I would consider to be my main crop potatoes, and but they're actually second earlies. I'm not doing a main crop potato this year. I just find that these second earlies, they always do better for me than the main crops. Um, and I think it's probably because I grow them in sort of slightly shady locations and the, the second earlies just seem like a little bit more vigorous and fast growing. They just seem to you know take advantage of that shade uh, shady spot better than a main crop does. Um, so your mileage might vary, you know, if you've got a better location for main crop, full sun, then um, maybe that'll work well for you, it doesn't for me. Um, I'm just doing Charlotte as a general purpose and Estima as the baking potatoes. We get through a lot of baking potatoes, so we do a lot of Estima. Um, and I'm doing three batches of Estima, which is quite unusual and probably not relevant to anybody else, but I'm doing one batch in containers and I'll leave them in the containers and harvest them as required all the way through when we're still harvesting them now. Um, and then I'll do another batch which are going to go into my sort of one of my deep coal frames which is particularly good for potatoes. Um, and I'll do 10 in there and I'll do them, I'll start them in small pots because that bed's full of carrots at the moment. And so until I get the carrots out, I can't put the potatoes in, but I want to get them started in the middle of April. So I'll be planting them out at the beginning of May. Um, and then I'll do another batch next month. I'll probably talk about that later on. Um, 
So more of those parsnip uh, onion combinations and then lettuces. And so I, I'm not doing my lettuces kind of cut and come again, where I, you know, where they have obviously individual leaves off the outside of them this year so much. Um, because I grow such a lot of lettuce, because we feed 14 people, um, I just find it's so much hard work picking individual leaves and the quality of the outer leaves is never as good as the quality of the inner leaves. So you're never getting the best quality leaves. You always get in the sub, you know, the substandard ones off the outside. They're not so bad, but they're not as nice as the sort of crunchy inner leaves. So I'm doing a lot of successions so that I can get, make, do whole head harvests and then process them standing up and get all those lovely inner leaves. And as a result of that, I'm doing quite a few Salanovas because the Salanovas look beautiful uh, and they are particularly good if you're doing full head harvests for individual salads in salad mixes like I do. Um, if you want to just do individual leaves, then which is absolutely great if you're sort of just picking salad every day for one or two people or something like that, it's definitely the way to go. Um, I've got all the what I consider my perfect dates for that in my ebook, and you can find a link to that down below. I also really like to do golden purslane for my um, salad mixes. Uh, it's my favourite summer salad leaf, and yeah, so I'm doing my first batch of that uh, middle of April, uh, and that is kind of a little bit tender, so it's best to sort of put that out after the last frost, so middle of May. Um, and first batch of sweet corn, and I'm doing quite a few successions of sweet corn because I don't like them all coming at once because we don't freeze it, we only eat it sort of fresh. Um, cucamelons, French beans to grow under cover and under fleece. Uh, if there's a risk of frost. So they will go under one of my low tunnels after cabbages. Um, and then they'll be replaced by purple spreading broccoli in July. So I've got a fairly narrow um, harvest window for them. So that's why I'm starting them in modules. If you had a longer harvest window available, you could start them direct in the ground, but then you know, you're kind of losing two or three weeks uh, whilst you wait for them to germinate. Um, Salad onions, again, I won't mention salad onions again because we do so many just endless successions of them, but it is worth mentioning that I'm transitioning uh, in sort of May and June, May, eight, late, mid-April and then in May to Summer Island, which I just find seem to grow a little bit better over the mid midsummer than Guardsmen and White Lisbon do. And then I'll be back to sort of Guardsmen and White Lisbon for harvest in autumn. And then we come to all the kind of squashes, the summer and the winter squashes. So my early uh, courgettes are growing well and they're going to go into the polytunnel sometime in sort of the middle of April, I guess. Um, and then these are the ones that are going to go. These are my main crop uh, summer squashes. So one ball courgettes and zephyr courgettes. And I would like to do ambassador, but I don't have any seeds at the moment. So anyway, I'm not going to buy any more. So unless somebody sends them to me. I won't be um, doing any other varieties of courgette, but I am doing these tromboncinos, uh, trombocino, um, which if you pick them small, they're like a courgette. So we have quite a nice range anyway. So the winter squashes I'm doing are Crown Prince, Jack B. Little, uh, Sweet Dumpling and Butternut and trombocino, but only the ones that you leave to grow big because the little ones are great for summer squash, then if you just leave them, into they grow really big uh, and they make it for a really nice winter squash and they last until, well, at least until uh, the end of the year. We never, we always run out of them by then, but you know, if you read the books, I don't trust books anymore, but if you read the books then they say, you know, that they, they last only till the end of the year. But, you know, people said that of uh, Sweet Dumpling and we were still eating those in February, so, I don't know what, who to trust or what to trust really. I think you just have to see what your own individual storage environment is like. And you know, they, they vary widely from a, a damp, moldy shed sort of thing. That's what I had last year. 
uh, to storing them in a cold bedroom and in a cold bedroom they just seem to last forever so that's what I'm doing and my first sowing of uh, tumbler tomatoes they're a little sort of um, hanging basket type tomato um, which I do in 30 litre tubs on the patio next to a brick wall where it's really warm and I don't start those as I say until the end of April because I don't really want to plant them out until June I don't really like putting um, them out until then mainly because I can't be bothered with hardening them off and by June you don't really need very much hardening off just a little bit of fleece for the first few days um, but don't worry about being late and I'll just digress here just talk about this whole sort of early and late thing when you watch a lot of YouTube videos which I don't but I, occasionally I do watch one just to see what people are saying and uh, you see people saying I'm starting my tomatoes in January I'm starting my tomatoes in February I'm starting my tomatoes in March or whatever you know and and it's you know it gives this impression that you know you really need to get started really early but the nature of spring and summer is that light levels are increasing and heat is increasing. And so things that are planted later get the advantage of more light and more heat. And they often catch up with things that you did early and they're often much healthier than things that you did early. So when you're doing things early, you have to be doing it for a reason. So for example, I did do early tomatoes, but that's only because they're gonna be in the poly in the conservatory for a few weeks and then they're going to go in the polytunnel and I've got fleece that I can wrap around them in the polytunnel if there's a frost and they're only my early crop so I don't need them to be really healthy plants I just need them to give me an early harvest and I'll probably scrap the plants by the time we get to July and let my later sown ones which will have caught up by then be my effectively my main crop outdoor tomatoes and that is the case with a lot of things. It's not actually the case so much with peppers, which do really respond well to being, you know, a fairly big substantial plant by the time you plant them out, because then you get a long harvest period. So it takes a long time for, for peppers to really get going and churning out fruits. But tomatoes get going and churning out fruits really quickly by comparison with peppers. So generally speaking, there's not that much need to do things early you know when light levels are increasing and heat's increasing it's very different in autumn so when you're doing things in late august and september maybe early october weeks matter at that time of year but weeks don't really matter months matter but weeks don't really matter very much in when you're doing things um uh in spring and summer in fact months sometimes don't matter that much to be honest um so anyway, that's my little digression about tomatoes and things. If you haven't got your tomatoes started, for example, or you haven't got your beetroot started, or haven't got your kale started, or haven't got your cabbages started, or whatever it is, don't worry too much about it. There's still plenty of time. So talking of timings, let's just talk about beetroot for a minute. I hear a lot of people talking about sowing beetroot for their storage crop in June to plant out in July and that has worked for me when I plant them in a location with good soil and full sun but I don't have that location anymore that was another allotment plot that I used to have a few years ago my daughter had actually I don't have that I don't have any location now that I can grow in that doesn't get shade for some of the day some of it during midday my plot for example my allotment plot gets shade from about 12 till about 2 the peak of sunlight right it's in shade because it's a huge tree as a result of that if i sow my uh, beetroot main crop storage beetroot um in the beginning of june they just don't size up for storage a few of them do but most of them don't and um, so I find it's better for me to sow mid-May but this year because of crop rotations I'm in the bed that's the shadiest bed that I've got so I'm going to start end of April to plant out sort of you know um, end of May 
um, beginning of June. And that is pretty early for your storage beetroot crop, a whole month earlier than if you were in full sun. But that's kind of what you have to do if you've got shade. So you do, when you're thinking about dates and you're listening to people saying, this is my perfect date for such and such. You know, Charles Dowding likes to talk a lot about his perfect dates for everything. And he's got specific dates like, you know, the 17th of April to do X or whatever. Think about the growing conditions. You know, how good your soil? My soil is horrible sandy soil. You know, no, no, hardly any nutrients in it. Relies totally on added nutrients that I provide. Um, and as I say, I, I have no sunny space. I have sunny spaces, but no spaces that aren't in shade for some of the day. Um, and often for quite a few hours of the day, like my kitchen garden, for example, parts of that are in shade from three o'clock in the afternoon. So compare that with Charles Darwin, for example, who's he's in full sun all the time, doesn't have any shade. So makes a bit a big difference actually i think maybe his little what do they call it his little garden or something like that or his small garden uh, i think that i think from memory maybe that is in the shade of a shed or something like that so that yeah it's another interesting digression don't um think about your specific growing conditions rather than just what other people like me might tell you and then my last, I think, succession of red cabbage. So most of my red cabbage is done, but this batch I want to put in after garlic and to have to put it in a little bit late. So they probably won't size up very big, but you know, they'll be better than nothing. We really we like red cabbage, so we like to have it for as long as possible. And, you know, I talked about my French, dwarf French beans and the risk of frost, because we have frost until the middle of May, where we are. Um, actually, we had one frost, quite a bad one, after the middle of May, I think it was like the 20th of May or something one year, and it did take out quite a lot of my French beans. So I am just do a little tray, like 12 um, beans, uh, just in case I lose a few to a late frost like that. So that is my April, and now I'm just going to do very quickly, I'm going to look at May, because pretty much May is just repeats of those things, but not totally. So I'm going to do my first sowing of carrots in the back garden and I want to do them a bit later uh, because of carrot fly because they work because they're in the back garden I don't want to put mesh on them and carrot fly is starting to wane by the time these will germinate in sort of mid-May and kind of late April to June really is peak carrot fly but in my back garden it seems to be I can get away with a little bit earlier than that I'll do some spare uh, winter squashes, my favourite varieties, so the trom trombosino, you'd think if it was my favourite variety I could pronounce it, wouldn't you? But I don't know, it's just something with my brain, it can't cope with, I get like word blindness sometimes, I can't, I look at it and I can't see how to say it. Um, but Crown Prince is fine, I can say that. So um, the, uh, yeah, so just in case I lost any of my other squashes that I did, uh, back in sort of the middle of April and um, then I've got a few spares I hate losing things and then having gaps so particularly with things like squash where there's nothing else you can really grow in the space um, more successions of sweet corn and because I've got my early dwarf French beans and I've, because I've got my early cobra climbing beans in the polytunnel I don't need to do my runner and French beans until there's definitely no risk of frost so I do mine on the 7th of May plant them out sort of late May and never had a frost in late May you know sort of you know, after the sort of 20th or so um, and I'm still doing believe it or not I'm still doing tomatoes on the 8th of May I did it last year no problem at all caught up with the ones that I did a little bit earlier and you know they just provided a bit longer harvest because they were sown a bit later that they, they gave us a longer harvest period which is really nice um so yeah you just don't worry about some of these dates honestly and then i'm actually doing potatoes on the 8th of may again it's pretty late but you know they're rapid they grow really fast and you know whereas if you planted those back in um 
you know, the beginning of April, say, they might take 120 days to maturity, but actually start them on the 8th of May, they only need about 90 days to maturity because it's just so much warmer and so much sunnier. Um, and the reason I'm doing mine late is because these are going to follow calabrese and cauliflower and I've got to get the calabrese and cauliflower harvested and therefore I start them out off a little bit later. I start them in small pots so I get a few weeks of, of advantage there. Then more importantly though, I'm starting my uh, winter carrots. So these are Eskimo. We harvest them all the way through winter and in spring. We're still harvesting them now. Um, and yeah, uh, it's, Eskimo are a slow growing variety, but they're very dense and very um, resistant to sort of damage by slugs and frost and, and all of that sort of thing. Um, so they're really great. Um, more of those summer island um, salad onions, more lettuces, more, even more, and, and another even later succession of tomatoes. Um, and yeah, more lettuces. And then the only really interesting thing that I'm doing in May is my first, the end of May, is my first succession of purple sprouting broccoli. And I do three varieties that give me a staggered harvest from about sort of January, February time, uh, and then another one in March, and then another one in April. So it gives me a really nice long period of harvest for purple sprouting broccoli. And then I get, after, when that finishes, I get calabrese and cauliflower. So I get a really nice continuous harvest. And I prefer doing purple sprouting broccoli because it's more reliable, I find, than doing cauliflower in winter. So um, for, for harvest in winter, rather. But these to get a, a really nice smooth harvest i do find it's better to do another succession in june uh, and they come just a few weeks you know a week or so later um otherwise you kind of you know can be a little bit sort of up, uh, trying to do that and that is it i'm done and it's just stopped raining just as i finish talking it stops raining so i hope the rain hasn't been too annoying in the background to this video my name's steve this is the seaside kitchen garden and allotment channel and i'm a bit weary this is my third attempt as i said of doing this video so anyway i'll see you soon